Hi friend, how's your drive for learning? Would you learn another thing? You better watch this. Vincent is a new teacher, and he recently read a book on teaching that suggested that people's success in school is closely tied to what happens around them. If a student is rewarded for learning, he or she is likely to continue to learn, for example. Vincent is learning about connectionism, an educational philosophy that says that learning is a product of the relationship between stimulus and response. That may sound pretty technical, so let's break down the connectionism a little further. A stimulus is something that causes a reaction, and the response is just a reaction to a stimulus. Think about what happens when a big piece of gooey chocolate cake is put in front of you. The sight and smells of the cake are the stimulus, and they are very likely to produce a response in you that involves drooling and maybe even a drowling trauma. Edward Thorndike was the psychologist who first proposed that connectionism is key to learning. Thorndike, who was popular in the first half of the 20th century, was the first educational psychologist, that is, he was the first person to bring together what psychologists had studied about how the human mind works and what educators knew about how to teach. Connectionism was Thorndike's main philosophy. He said that learning is about responding to stimuli. Believe it or not, much of his theory is still used in classrooms today, almost a hundred years later. Let's look closer at the first law of connectionism and how it might appear in a classroom. Remember Vincent? He's a new teacher and has read about connectionism. He wants to apply it to his classroom but he's not sure where to start. What can he do? Connectionism is closely related to the word connect, which is just what happens in this theory. The stimulus and its response are connected in a person's mind, like associating chocolate cake with drooling. This connection between stimulus and response is called a stimulus response bond or an SR band. The stronger the SR band, the better a person has learned the lesson. What does this mean for education? Imagine that every time one of Vincent's students studied, he got a good grade, and every time he did not study, he got a bad grade. The stimulus in this case is studying, and the response is the grade. The student has a strong SR band between studying and good grades. That is, the student believes that studying leads to good grades. The law of effect is the first of three laws of connectionism. It says that if a stimulus results in a positive outcome, it strengthens the SR band, while if it results in a negative outcome, the SR band is weakened. Think about Vincent's student who gets good grades when he studies. Every time he gets a good grade after studying, the SR band is strengthened. And the student learns even more that studying results in getting a good grade. On the flip side of that, every time the student gets a bad grade after not studying, the SR band between not studying and good grade is weakened. The students learn that not studying does not result in good grades and is less likely to not study in the future. Can Vincent do things in his classroom to help strengthen the SR band and use the law of effect to his advantage? Absolutely. For example, he could reward effort as well as outcome so that a struggling student who works hard gets a reward for his work. He could also punish bad habits so that a student who does not pay attention get detention or something like that. According to the law of effect, his students will be more likely to work hard and less likely not to pay attention if he does those things.